Hi everybody, Robin here at Toadstool Tarot, and today I'm doing an unboxing. Now, I don't usually do unboxings, but um, I thought I would today to give you my first impressions of the things that I bought. Two packages. I thought they might ship them both in one box because they're from Amazon, and if you order at the same time, they often will uh, combine items in one package. Um, the first thing I got, I did, op I did open the packages beforehand, but I didn't even put my hand in to look or fish them out. First thing I got was a vinyl magnetic pouch for tarot by Luck Lab, and this was on Amazon. <laughs> I have several others of these, and I love them. I have, oh, do I have any handy? Well, here's, here's a previous one with a, a moon pattern on it. And they are sort of, they feel like leather. I think they're probably vinyl with a kind of a, sort of a velveteen liner. And you can see I put a little masking tape here to identify the deck I'm storing in it. I love that they're magnetically enclosed. I have a black one, a gray one, a uh, turquoise one, and I saw this one online which was sort of a wheat color kind of, tan. Very pretty pattern with this sort of Celtic knot tree pattern and design on the side. Really nice. They go for about 20 bucks. And uh, really nice, soft interior. They uh, are standard tarot size, so if your tarot is a little smaller, no problem. If it's a little bigger, you might have problems. Or if it's an indie deck that's really thick card, it might be too thick to go in there. So you need to sort of gauge by the measurements on Amazon. Or if you have like a standard RWS right away deck, it will fit. Otherwise, not, I can't guarantee it. Look, there's little stars there. That's kind of cute. And yeah, nice kind of, it's a little darker than I thought it would be online. It looked more like a kind of a wheat tan, like a golden tan. This looks a little more like a very light brown, but that's okay. Oh, it smells really good too. It smells like leather. Oh, look at the little design on the top. So, um, yeah, again, it's from Luck Lab. Um, I'm not sure which one, which deck I'm gonna put in here. I have sort of like four or five favorite decks and I've been kind of keeping those in these and actually the um, Deviant Moon um, uh, what do you call it Triumphi della Luna illustrated might go in here because that has a brownish back which is closest to this color than any of the other four so that might go in here or because of the tree pattern, I might put my harmonious tarot in, which is very garden-like. Um, that one's currently in the, um, the turquoise blue or aqua blue because um, there is a lot of sort of watery, leafy kind of coloring that would go with it too. I haven't made up my mind yet. So that's package number one. Package number two is a deck. And this one is the Black Cat's Tarot or the Tarot de los Gatos Negros. I had never heard of this deck before and it's been around since I think 2013. And I recently saw a um, a VR uh, to the Tarot Extremes prompt 
that was posted by uh, Julie Peekaboo Rose. And one of the decks that she showed in her um, VR was this deck. And that was the first time I saw it. And now I'm going to have a hell of a time getting it open. I have trouble with shrink wrap. And this is one of the reasons that I don't do unboxings. Because sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get the shrink wrap off without damaging the cards or the box or cutting myself. And I got a piece of it. Sometimes you need to chisel the shrink wrap off in pieces. So let's see if I can spend half of my unboxing time trying to get the package open. This is why my usual walkthroughs come prepared without, without the plastic wrap on. Finally got it off. Of course, usually when you open these boxes, there's another set of shrink wrap inside. We'll see if there is here. Yes, of course. So you're now treated to round two of me trying to get the inner shrink wrap off. I'd be just as happy if these companies stopped doing that shrink wrap. Oh, here, this one has a little zip tab, which is nice. Why couldn't they put that on the outside as well? It's a low scarabeo deck. And I should say up front that I am not personally a cat fan. So you say, well, why did you buy a black cat's deck? When I saw the walkthrough of this, wasn't sure at first. I actually really liked the color, the coloring in the deck, the palette. It's sort of nighttime colors in sort of blues and greens mostly with like, I think there were black borders. And, uh, and it wasn't strictly speaking cats. It was sort of cat-like humanoid figures. Sort of alien-esque, and I thought, well, that's okay, that works for me. So it's it's sort of symbolic or reminiscent of cats' postures and movements, but not really cats. Here you can see tuck box. I'm not fond of tuck boxes, but little black book. As usual, with multiple languages, one, two, three, four, five, six languages, which means that the English text consisting of about two sentences per card. And it looks like they are sentences rather than just a string of keywords. So we get 12 pages of text in English. One spread described, not, not uh, diagrammed. And uh, a paragraph sort of describing or explaining the deck. Actually in the majors it looks like it might be a paragraph each, maybe three or four sentences. And in the minors, more like one or two sentences. Now, the card stock and the card size. Card size, it's a little bit narrower than your average RWS sort of standard. The 
cardstock is flexible. It is uh, semi-gloss, a little bit of a sheen. Um, I would say it feels a little more glossy or slippery than your usual uh, satin kind of finish. There's an ad card inside. I like the reversible backs and the pretty colors. So I picked this deck. I mean, I liked what I saw in the walkthroughs. And I, the, Julie didn't show all the cards, so I did look for several walkthroughs and watched them several times, which I encourage people to do whenever they buy decks, because sometimes it's just a buyer's impulse. I think you need to kind of really look at a, a full walkthrough then maybe stop and put it aside and come back again if you're still interested. As many as three, if I watch a walkthrough as many as three or four times, then the, the gears start really cranking and I think, I think maybe I want this deck, especially if the price is right. And uh, I tend to do that more if it's um, out of print this one was still in print, and I don't know why I'd never seen it before, because uh, I often do scroll through releases on Amazon for tarot, and I'd never seen it. Um, the title card has this image here, which seems like, as I recall, there are not that many cards in the deck that bright. Um, and one thing I do like about this, unlike the old Los Garabeo cards, this one doesn't have multiple languages. It's their more recent system where it just has numbers in um, Roman numerals and also uh, Arabic num numerals and uh, suit symbols. I mean, um, not, yeah, suit symbols and in the courts, the symbol. Um, so might as well just start walking you through these. I did watch the walkthroughs through several times and looked at cards to see one at a time if they would translate into Rider Waite Smith meanings for me readily without me having to struggle too much. And I think for the most part they did. Another thing is because the, the decorative borders are in black and the basic coloring of this deck, a lot of it is sort of dark. It's made me think of a nighttime deck. And I don't really have maybe one, possibly one or two decks that seem like nighttime scenes. So I thought it might be nice to have something like that. Um, most of my decks are brighter, more colorful, daytime mode um, scenes. And again, I mean, these figures have cat's tails and cat's heads, but the bodies seem like humanoids. I do like the symbolism of black cats in witch-oriented or tarot kind of magicry. So I can work with that. It's just I don't want cute cats. And I wouldn't say these are cute cats. Some might say so.
but uh, I don't I don't have any other decks with cats or dogs with cute little smiling faces staring up out of the cards at me that's just not my thing the cutesy aspect in cards really doesn't do it for me I like stylized art but I, I and I don't really like dark and creepy necessarily I do like sort of sobering or serious kind of cards and this one you might say has a sort of amusing quality or amusement in the imagery but I think the action going on in each card can be dealt with or read from a serious or semi-serious point of view. It's not, not really comical exactly. Now here you can see the, uh, at the bottom you have the cup. So this is a suit of cups at the top. There is a uh, horse's head. So this is the Knight of Cups. That's the symbol uh, labeling on these um, low scarabeo decks, which I like. That way you don't, you can work with it regardless of what language you speak. This one uh, is a little confusing to me because when I see a boat crossing water, I think of the Six of Swords. This happens to be the Ace of Pentacles, which is a little strange. It doesn't strike uh, water, you usually get Ace of Cups or something. So if I'm in doubt about any of the images in here, I can uh, work with the, the card labeling to sort through the meanings. I love the coloring in here, all the, the greens and blues and blacks, all very cool colors all very kind of nighttime coloring and some of the cards uh, that feel like night the skies in the background are not so dark that you can't make out the imagery now that I think about it uh, it might just be the darkness of the cats and the darkness of the borders that makes me read this as a nighttime deck. When you look at the artwork, it's not really that at all. I can see myself with my headlamp on in bed at night leafing through these cards and contemplating them and enjoying this as a pre-bedtime nighttime consultation deck. trying to think I don't even have I don't think that many animal decks I don't really like animal decks for the most part but these aren't realistic animals the one of the other decks I have is the um, the curious creatures tarot and that has sort of comical animal heads on human bodies in full clothing and they seem like caricatures of activities with sort of uh, stereotyped or caricatured uh, expressions or emotions on the figures. Oh, and then I do have a couple of sort of Granville type decks. 
and he did fully clothed animal figures. So I guess you could say my animal decks are more in the surrealist vein than realistic nature snapshots. So there you have it. The Black Cat's Tarot. I think I'm going to like it and if I don't I think it was worth a $22, might have been, just to have it to look through closer than to watch a virtual walkthrough on YouTube. Thanks for spending time with me today for this unboxing or unwrapping, and I hope to see you all again soon. Take care.